where we've been living for a few months. So perfect. It looks like we are, uh, it looks like we are live. A few more. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here today. And uh, I just, I appreciate the fact that you're taking the time out of your day to invest in yourself and invest in your business, in your mental health. It's important. And so just the fact that you are here, I applaud you. And because we're going to talking about how to avoid burnout, how to maintain your mental health, uh, I'd love to start by just reminding everyone to breathe. So if we could all actually just like take a deep breath. I know it sounds weird, but like we forget sometimes how shallow um, we're breathing, especially if it's stressful, right? There's a lot going on. So I'd love for everyone to just kind of like Did everyone realize like don't clench your jaw, like take the tension out of your shoulders. Like even though I'm mindful and I pay attention to this stuff, I still was like, oh my gosh, I'm holding everything right here. So that's tip number one. Uh, and the overview for today, just so you know, is we're going to be going over what could be causing burnout, maybe some things you weren't aware of, and also how to avoid it. Because can you all agree that there's a lot happening right now, whether you're a parent, whether you're in real estate, whether, you know, there's a pandemic, regardless, we have people from lots of different states on here. Some states are still shut down a lot more than Las Vegas is. So can we all agree that there's, there's a lot going on right now? And if we don't take care of ourselves mm -hmm. and our mental health, we're going to get caught up in, caught up in it. Uh, especially if you guys go on social media, been engaging in that at all. It just seems like there's a lot. So the goal for today is to talk about burnout and maybe give you some tips on how not only to avoid it, but what could be causing it that you may not think is burnout or may not think is causing it. And we're gonna, we're kind of talking on two topics and I'm gonna do my best to cram it all into 50 minutes. I may have been a little bit uh, ambitious because the second part of it will be how to maintain your, your mental health and some tips on what to do to help you kind of navigate and stay in more of a calm, centered, balanced place where you can make more rational, educated decisions. Uh, so I will be sharing my screen in a moment. And I just wanted to, again, say thank you for being here. And if you don't know, my name is Melissa Mishat. I've been in the real estate business for 11 years now. Uh, I do have a team, the Mishat Group, and I'm working every day on removing myself more and more from the business and more leading and running and coaching the team. Uh, I also started my own coaching business in November called Realign, and I am now a master practitioner of NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. Ooh, that will be coming up in the second half of our uh, class today. And so if some of you have been on my classes before, it may sound familiar. There's going to be some repeat concepts. If you haven't, I just ask you to have an open mind and understand that there could be things happening you may not even realize that are affecting your outcome, your results. And I'm a big believer of it's not necessarily about doing more. It's really honoring where you're at and truly getting in alignment with who you are. So with all that being said, if you do have questions, please put them in the chat box. Uh, um, I'll keep checking it. And I will have time at the end for questions as well. If you're watching this on Facebook, I will get there after to make sure everyone is addressed. So, uh, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. Okay, perfect. Nope, okay. Playing around with some speaker views. I love when it gets recorded and you see everybody's faces and they don't realize they're being recorded. So if I'm doing it right, hopefully that's not happening. Uh, so can everyone see me still <laughs> in the top corner? Everyone's good there? All right, just checking. Uh, okay, and let me get the chat box open. Yep, we're good. Awesome. All right, so how to avoid burnout and maintain your mental health. So what I would like to do is start with what is burnout? 
So burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. Can anyone, has anyone ever felt burnt? And by the way, I can't see you guys right now, so I will ask you to use the um, chat box if possible. But have we all experienced burnout at some point in our lives? Like you can all think of something you've experienced burnout at before, right? So it occurs when you, uh, everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> of course. So it occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, unable to meet constant demands. Can we all agree burnout can feel like you just want to give up and it's exhausting and you're tired and maybe something you used to love or something you thought you enjoyed, all of a sudden you don't really enjoy it anymore or you're just maybe wanting to quit or give up right? As the stress continues, you begin to lose the interest and motivation that led you to take on a certain role in the first place. And everyone is like, yep. <laughs> so I appreciate that you guys are, you know, being open and vulnerable in here too, because it is a real thing. And by the way, it can also mirror symptoms of anxiety and depression and some other severe things where in reality, it could actually be burnout. So it reduces productivity, saps your energy, leaving you feel increasingly helpless, hopeless, cynical, and resentful. Is that a fun state to be in? Like that is not uh, what I would say productive or a life, you know, of happiness and joy. So eventually you may feel like you have nothing more to give. And they say burnout can actually lead to people quitting, leaving relationships, leaving jobs, switching careers, giving up. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever talked to someone who talks about wanting to move away in the middle of nowhere. I know I'm guilty of this. You, if you know me, you'll laugh because I say this all the time, but I genuinely do. But if someone says like, I just want to go live in the middle of nowhere, not deal with people anymore. To me, that's a sign of actually burnout, right? So there are a lot of different ways burnout can kind of creep into your life and you may not realize that's what you're dealing with. So what are some other reasons that could be causing this? So I wanna share with you guys, if I have your permission, I wanna challenge the way you think a little bit. That's what I like to do. I like to challenge the way you think because we're all programmed and we're all exposed to society and what society says we should be doing, how hard we should be working, how much we should be working, especially in real estate, how many deals we should be doing, how much money we're making. Like what other industry judges everyone based on the number of deals they do or what their commission goals are? Like have you guys ever hung out with non-real estate agents and like do they talk about their salary goal for the year? Or like, you know, I have a real nine to five job. Let me talk about what my, what my goals are this year and how much I wanna make. And by the way, I've tried to be like around a group of people and say like, so what is your goal for this year? Cause I'm curious, like I wanna know what, what people make in different industries. Real estate's the only one where we're like judging each other based on how much we do and how much we make. So that's why I wanna challenge you guys a little bit cause we are conditioned to think this way. So what could be causing this? Doing something that is out of alignment with your soul and who you're meant to be. And I'm gonna give you a couple things right now that we only have time to really deep dive into one. So number one is the one we're gonna be focusing on first, okay? The other topics we could spend hours talking about as well, but for today's purpose, we're gonna be talking about this one the most. It could be an unequal energy exchange, meaning you're putting in more than you receive. Especially if you're newer to real estate or a new career, sometimes you're putting in an unequal amount of energy. You're putting in so much effort to get things going and get things started, how many people give up or quit right before they're about to have that breakthrough? Or like right before something was actually going to happen. And I love what Dave said, like a lack of purpose, right? So that's a huge one too. So it could be an unequal energy exchange. It could be a toxic environment and not in alignment with who you are. There could be lacking boundaries. So you're just letting it control you instead of you controlling whatever it may be. Maybe you're working too much without rest and recovery. 
So if you're feeling depleted, drained, exhausted, depressed, this could be in any area of your life, by the way. It doesn't have to just be career. It could be relationships. It could be health. It could be business. There's spiritual. There's so many different you know, options with that. But pay attention and just kind of check in and say, if I'm doing more and more isn't working, or maybe I am trying and just it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. Maybe you feel like you're going in circles. Maybe you're hitting your head against a wall. Maybe there's so many different things that could actually be burnout. And at the same time, what if it's something on this list instead? You're putting in too much effort and you're not getting that equal exchange back. By the way, there are such things as toxic environments and not being in alignment. And there was a quote I saw, I think Mel Robbins posted it last week uh, that said, if you're depressed and anxious, make sure you're not surrounded by a-holes. Like maybe the environment you're in is not actually supporting you and your goals, and it could actually be toxic. Uh, boundaries, that could be a whole other conversation, right? So what would happen if you enforced boundaries? So if real estate, you're letting it control your life and you're working seven days a week, okay, maybe that's working too much without rest and recovery, but what would it look like if you actually put boundaries in place so you had weekends off? What would that look like? So a question for you guys right now, whether you write it down or ask yourself is, is there a way I can make this work for me that it actually supports me in what I want? So I used to say, I hate real estate. I don't want to sell anymore. I don't like real estate. I can't do this anymore. Negative. I was completely burnt out. I've been there. Uh, I felt like I was on a hamster wheel. There was no way off it. And what I realized was there was actually all of these uh, in place. I was working too much without any days off. I had zero boundaries. If you said jump, I said, how high? Okay, Saturday, sure. I said, I'm taking the day off, but okay, let me go show you homes, right? I let it completely control me. So if I had just enforced some boundaries, would I actually have given myself some space to appreciate and enjoy what I was doing? So can anyone relate to these or see something on this list that maybe you didn't realize could be causing your burnout in the first place? And we're going to be do, diving into the alignment piece of it and what that means, because I've also been in a situation where I was trying and working so hard. Like, I don't think I could have worked harder. I was recruiting, running a team, uh, pretty much doing everything, very high standards, constantly looking at numbers. And I felt like I was completely failing at life. It was miserable. I was miserable. I was crying all the time. I was emotional. I was insecure. I, I didn't know what was wrong with me. And I, by the way, I didn't mention this, but I've been on this like personal development journey for about six years now because I felt like something was broken and I felt like something was wrong with me. And no matter how hard I tried, it just wasn't working. And so I took that like, not, oh, it's a, you know, fail faster and I'll, I'll learn. I took it like, I must suck at this and this is not meant for me. And I need to figure out something else to do with my life because it's not working the way that I wanted it to. So I don't know if anyone's in a situation like that right now, or you can relate or you've been there. But what I found is it actually wasn't in alignment with who I am and what I wanted to be doing in the first place. It's not that something was wrong with me and broken and I had to fix it. So I want to just point that out because that happens a lot and I see it. Matt, thank you for sharing that. Toxic environment, not intentionally, right? It's not intentional. It's not like you're surrounded by horrible people, but maybe it's just not the support you actually need or it's not supporting you in your goals. Okay, so I'm gonna switch gears a little bit real fast. If you have questions, let me know. But I wanna talk to you about your conscious versus your unconscious mind. And are you aware you have a conscious versus unconscious mind? <laughs> so, Consciously is where we set goals, desires, and methods. I'm gonna achieve this, I wanna achieve that, I'm gonna do X amount of deals, I'm gonna lose weight this year. Have any of you guys ever set a New Year's resolution before? January 1st rolls around, this is it, this is the year, I'm gonna get healthy, I'm gonna do 50 deals, I'm gonna make $100,000. Like, can you all think of, of a goal or something that you've set that, you know, every year, <laughs> every day, Yep. So that is coming from our conscious mind. Okay. It's a conscious decision. 
Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Look at what actually is controlled by our unconscious mind. Our attitude, self-esteem, our self-talk, our self-image. That's a big one for me. I'm starting to realize my filter of what I think I look like versus what other people may think I look like. That's a big one that we, a lot of us don't talk about very often. Uh, our worldview, our beliefs. So there's so much happening underneath the surface. We say we want to do something. But then we're like, well, I just must not be motivated. Or have you guys ever heard, maybe I need more accountability. Real estate agents love accountability. Let's increase the accountability. Let's increase the pain. Let's keep pushing, keep going. Okay, well, what if I told you this is all coming from your unconscious mind? This isn't just a conscious decision that you're like, I'm going to hit this goal. Okay, now I hit it. Because if we did, wouldn't we all hit our New Year's resolutions? Yep, every day I need more self-discipline. Do you though? <laughs> because if it was that easy, would we all set a goal and then just do it? So what, what's actually happening beneath the surface? And I will tie all this, how this uh, aligns with burnout as well. So consciously, goals, desired methods. Unconsciously, all that negative crap happening beneath the surface. In reality, your conscious mind is your goal setter. Your unconscious mind is the goal getter. We don't realize it because no one ever talks about how our unconscious mind is actually running the show. You may hear people say unconscious, subconscious, but until I started studying and diving into NLP, I had no idea that our unconscious is actually what's running the show. Remember how in the beginning I said, just take a deep breath. Are you consciously thinking about breathing? No. It unconsciously just happens. What about when you're driving and you end up somewhere that um, like you're like, how did I miss my exit? I do this drive every single day. You're almost like on autopilot. So how, how does that happen? So here is a quick tip on how you know if you are in alignment or not with who you are as a person. If you're in alignment, your desired behavior and your actual behavior line up. I say I'm gonna do something and I do it. That actually means your conscious and unconscious are in alignment. You guys agree, you're not fighting each other. So I want you guys to think for a second, is there something you ever said in your life that you wanted and you did it? Big or small, we can all come up with something. I said I wanted it and I made it happen. Cool, you were actually in alignment. Your unconscious and your conscious were in alignment. So how do you know if you are out of alignment? Your desired behavior and your actual behavior do not match. So all those New Year's resolutions, all those goals you set, all those things that you say you're gonna do and you know, I'm going to, you know, this year's the year I'm gonna be more disciplined or whatever it is. And, or how about going to the gym? And for my gym people out there, that's not me, but for the gym people out there, how many times have you said, like, I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna start January 1st? And then it's like, okay, well, maybe next Monday. Okay, well, maybe February. And now all of a sudden it's August and you're like, well, I still haven't gone to the gym, but I said I set that goal. Well, that's because your conscious and unconscious are actually not in alignment. So, any questions on that before? we move on you can put it in the chat box i'm going to check that really fast uh but any any questions on alignment and i'm going to dig deeper into how you even know what this means how you can get in alignment but i want you guys to understand that burnout one of the biggest reasons it comes from is because you may not be in alignment with who you are and when people say you need more accountability, I need to be more disciplined, I need to be more motivated, my why isn't big enough, actually, there's something happening at the unconscious level that you just haven't tapped into yet. Uh, someone asked, is misalignment can cause delay in decision making? There's a few things that can cause that, uh, I guess, delay in it. But I would say if it's something truly in alignment with who you are, you, you would easily make that decision. Because it just seems so 
it's so right. Like it feels right. Melissa, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, yes, totally agree with you. Um, that has been my experience when I when there, there is a difference be between my conscious and, and unconscious. Mm -hmm. Definitely, my goals are not gonna be reachable. But my question is, how? Be before, because. I gonna I can be aware about this difference, the desired behavior and the actual behavior. Mm -hmm. But when I have difficulties to get a match in both levels of desire, how we can work in order to to be clear and consciously what is gonna help us to get our yeah. no, that's, a, that's a great question. So how do you figure out how you get that into alignment, right? And, and someone asked also, like, how do you make your desired and actual behavior line up if you, like, how do you do it? And I would say this is where having guidance or someone else who understands this uh, can help you. Because because here's the thing, we all have blind spots. Like, we all have blind spots. I've had coaches since 2012. So it's eight years I've invested in personal development, seminars, coaches to help me. The problem was they weren't in alignment with who I am and what I wanted to do. It was, it was not in alignment. They were trying to put their agenda on me saying that should work when in reality, I think it should be someone helping you achieve your goals and getting, you know, we can go more into that later. But so I guess the easy answer is sometimes you do need a third party to help you figure out what that root cause is. Cause if it was so simple that we could just tap into it and say, oh, that's why I'm not in alignment with my values, which we'll get into in a second, or I'm just not in alignment, I don't know why, then we would all be able to just change it like that. Uh, so a lot of the work I do is changing things at the root or the unconscious level to help someone figure out what's driving them in the first place. So there's a couple more things coming that might help answer that too. And so yeah, we'll, we'll keep going just for sake of time and, and let me know at the end if you still have questions on that. Great, so, thank you. You're welcome. So values, I am obsessed with values because they are the most intimate, deepest connection with ourselves and people think they know their values, but it's actually unconscious. So how would you even know what they are in the first place? Like you might know what's happening or you may know what's important to you, but you may not know the deeper level of what's actually happening there. So values, they're the deepest level programming in the unconscious mind. They determine what you do with your time, how you evaluate your time spent. It determines if you take action and it controls action and behavior. So I hate to say this, but your behavior, your belief system, and the action you take is at the unconscious level. And it has to do with your values and what is actually important to you. So here's a perfect example. If I said, uh, how many of you, by show of hands, or you can put in the chat box, how many of you love going out to a really nice meal? Like hundreds of dollars, you don't care, good food is really important to you. You want the experience, you want the quality, like, like fine dining is something that's like, yes, absolutely, no question, I love it. Anyone, anyone like a foodie, fine dining? Yep, <laughs> we got a few head nods, we got some yeses, definitely, uh -huh. raising hands. How many of you are, um, there's no way I would spend money on that. I have like, you know, I'd rather go get ramen or something cheaper and like, I'm not wasting money on that. Like, that's literally what you say. Like, I wouldn't waste my money on that. There's no value in that. How many of my people, me included, are like uh, spending money on food? No, like I, mm -mm. Our, our fancy dinner is like $30. Hole in the wall places, local, don't have time for fine dining. To me, not important. Anyone? besides me. <laughs> yep, got a few. So, yep, thank you. Glad I'm not alone. <laughs> Here's where values come in. That is that is something at the unconscious level. Let's just say your value. 
here's, here's where people don't realize how powerful this is. For my people who said, fine dining, important, yes, experience. If I told you, stop caring about that, why don't you save some money and just go get cheaper things and you're not allowed to go do that anymore, how would that feel? You'd be like, no, crappy, uh-uh. Why, why would I do that? That's like, that's stupid. Why would I even do that? For my people who said, I would rather save money and spend it on something else. I want nothing to do with fine dining. I can care less. And I'm like, by the way, every meal you go on from now on has to be over hundred dollars and you need to, uh, you need to, um, oops, let's see. Sorry trying to mute, unmute people. Um, and you needed to do that. There would be pushback. Yeah, you think? I want you guys to see that your values are in play 24 seven. You just don't realize it's happening. So for someone, someone asked earlier, how do I make my desired behavior and my actual behavior line up? Well, if it's not lining up, that's like me telling you to stop spending money on fine dining when you enjoy it, or me telling you, start spending money on fine dining when you don't enjoy it. You're like, no, that's not even important to me. Why would I do that? So, so I'm going to dig into this a little bit more, but do you understand that values are actually what controls everything about you? So that's why I love them so much because how in the world do you do anything about it? How do you change it? So here's the big takeaway. Burnout can be caused by being out of alignment or violating your values. So for example, here's a great one because we're all, most of us are in real estate. Freedom is my number one career value. Flexibility, do what I want, when I want, make what I want, have complete control. You could say there's some negativity in there because I want to be in control, but really to me, freedom is just, it's financial freedom. It's, it's, it, I can work from home. I don't have to work from home, right? There's just something about it that is literally at the deepest level so important to me. So could you see if a buyer wanted to go see a home last minute or on a Saturday or Sunday when I said I don't work weekends and I don't enforce boundaries, can you see that that could actually violate my freedom boundary because they're telling me when they need to do things and I'm not in control of my schedule. Things, can you see how there's like little things like that where things might actually be violating your values. You just don't realize that's what it's doing. When I'm in an environment of numbers and you gotta hit your numbers and what are your numbers and it's the 26th of August, you gotta double down. If you don't work every day to hit your numbers and force, that pushes me away faster than I can even say it. However, I found myself in that environment for probably six years of my life, and I didn't understand why I was miserable, because it was violating my value of freedom and growth and flexibility, not push, 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 grind. I believe in ease and flow. So when you put me in an environment of force and push, I shut down. So here I was thinking I was a failure and a loser because it's not working. No, it wasn't working because it was in violation of who I am as a person. That's not even my, that's not even what I believe in. I believe in less is more and work smarter, not harder. So is that, is that making sense? I'm going to check the chat box real quick. Yes, I love it. All right. Because you're trying to do, you're trying so hard to do something that's essentially unnatural to you. Yes. Huge. So, okay, uh, you asked finding something to align your values will help you hit the goal and accomplish the things you didn't want to do. I would argue, what is it that you don't want to do and how do we flip it to get that in alignment with you? It's not forcing you to do something you don't want to do. It's figuring out why don't you want to do it? Is it fear? Is it um, not knowing what to say, not knowing what to do? Is there something that's not in alignment with you? Does that... So, so uh, all, and by the way, I'm going to be so respectful of time. It is being recorded. We still have 23 minutes, but if we go over one o'clock, uh, I'm sorry, two o'clock, then, um, I will, 
stay on answer questions and finish up and just know if you have to go at two, then this will be recorded and sent to you as well. So someone said, uh, they tell themselves it's laziness when they're not doing what they said they wanna do. It's not laziness, something is out of alignment. And luckily I know you and I will help you uncover what that is. <laughs> Ooh, I love what Dave said. It gets spicy when two of our personal values are opposing. Yep, did you know that your values can be in conflict? So here's a good example. I used to think freedom and making more money did not go hand in hand. If I wanna be free and have more flexibility in my schedule, then to me, making more money meant I had to work more, which took away from my freedom. So there was a conflict. So I said, I wanna make more, but in reality, I felt like making more made me give up more time. Now again, that's boundaries. That's me not enforcing boundaries. There were some alignment things there. But can you see how when we're internally fighting ourselves, it's because we actually have inner conflict. And there is a way unconsciously to integrate it and remove the conflict. And I'll be going over some options for that at the very end. So thank you all for sharing because you're absolutely correct. <laughs> oh, this makes so much sense. Yes, I think this was the aha for me. I'm not kidding you guys. I spent six years searching for what was wrong with me. Why was my anxiety so bad? It got to a point where I didn't even want to leave the house. Like it got really, really bad. And I was stuck and miserable and depressed. And I didn't understand what was wrong with me. And I was on this journey to try and figure it out. And it wasn't until I learned NLP back in September. And it wasn't until I really understood what was unconsciously driving me that there was nothing wrong with me. I was trying to do something that wasn't aligning with who I am as a person. So to me, that's like my mission is to help everybody realize where they're out of alignment. It's not something wrong with you. It's not that you're failing at your job. It's not that you're lazy or you're not disciplined or you need more accountability. It's yes, someone said so glad it's not just me. I was losing my mind. <laughs> if anyone's been around me in the past couple of years, you know I was a different person because I was I was running around like a crazy person, not understanding why I was stressed and miserable. We don't have to live like that, you guys. Life is short. So I want to just remind you, when you're living in your purpose, you do not run out of energy. So think about it. If you're tired all the time, if you're exhausted, if it's a burden, it may not be in alignment with who you are or what your purpose is. And Dr. Matt James is who runs NLP.com, the Empowerment Partnership. I love, that's the name of the business, is the Empowerment Partnership, and their mission is to empower the planet. You want to talk about thinking bigger, right? I love it. So Dr. Matt James is who runs NLP. That is who I am certified with. And he said this at our training in July. When you're living in your purpose, you don't run out of energy. You know how much it used to annoy me when people would say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I was like, well, clearly I hate what I do because I don't want to work. <laughs> so someone was asking how you find the disconnect. We'll keep going and, and dig into that. Okay, so any questions? I know I dumped a lot on you. I wanna make sure you have, and I'm gonna end with tips on what you can do to figure out how you're out of alignment, what you can do to kinda start going through this process. I promised I would cover a couple things on maintaining your mental health as well. So before we kinda switch gears, I tend to dump a lot of information. So is everyone okay? Or anyone have like really quick questions before we switch a little bit and don't worry, I'll tie it all back together at the very end. So just wanna check in with you all and make sure. Um, and by the way, it's a process, okay? So even when you're like, something's out of alignment, I, I don't know what to do, how do I figure this out? There are resources, I'm putting my info at the end that you can always reach out as well, but just know that's part of this journey. It's not just, okay, I figured it out, let me fix it really fast, right? It might take some self-reflection. It might take, um, for those of you who were in my classes earlier this year, it takes some time to kind of start figuring out what this all really means. So how do you maintain your mental health? I'm gonna give you some quick tips on this too. First of all, I keep talking about NLP. If you don't know what it is, real fast, neuro-linguistic programming, it is how to use the language of the mind to consistently achieve our specific and desired outcomes. 
So I am certified with the Association of Integrative Psychology, I'm not a psychologist. Uh, however, I have learned skills to actually reprogram and retrain things at the unconscious level, which to me is the coolest thing ever because we wonder why we say we want something, don't do it. NLP, we've heard of it in a sales context, right? So you've heard of it in like language, sales, embedded commands, but there's so much more to it that we just don't understand how our brain works or how it processes information. So I'm going to take a moment really fast and go through the NLP communication model, which is what started to change everything for me because I just didn't know my brain was doing this. Like I wish they taught us this in school instead of, you know, everything else. So. What I want you all to take a look at is the communication model. So what this is saying is there's an external event, and by the way, external events are happening 24 seven. So they say consciously, we're only processing 126 bits of information per second. Unconsciously, we are processing 2 million per second. So an external event happens, which your brain deletes, generalizes, and distorts, which creates your internal representation, which is basically your perception. So by the way, no two people have the same exact internal representation. That creates a state, which is sad, happy, anxious, right? A state is like an emotional state, which affects your physiology, which affects your behavior. So any of you uh, road rage people, I love that I did this for Brett's team in Jersey because like everybody raised their hand at road rage. I guess it's a really big thing on the East Coast, uh, not saying it's not in Las Vegas. Um, so let's say somebody cuts you off. That's an external event, which your brain generalizes, deletes, or distorts. So you could generalize saying that jerk, that piece of whatever, I'll show him, I'm going to honk. You know what? I'm going to speed up and I'm going to, like how many, how many of you do that? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone admitting that? Um, because I'm a distort. I'm a, um, I don't want to get run over or hurt. So I'm going to let you get out of my way. It doesn't bother me. Please go get far away from me as possible. Uh, so that creates your internal, sometimes, thank you for admitting that, um, that creates your internal representation, which affects your physiology. And we're going to get more into that in a moment. So I want you guys to start thinking that external events are happening every single day, including the media, including the news, including real estate. So how many of you have a client that calls and you're like, oh, crap, I hate when they call. I don't want to talk to them. Oh my God, it's going to be, they're going to yell at me. Like you start creating. Well, what you're doing is you're running it through your filters and associating it to past experiences. So I know that gets a little deep. But my whole thing is I realized I was filtering everything in a distorted fashion. So I am a more paranoid uh, filter where I feel like everyone is out to get me or I'm in danger. I'm constantly, you know, fearing my life. Uh, I know it sounds absurd. I've worked a lot on it. I'm much better now. But it's because an external, someone could be walking towards me. And in my mind, I'm like, better be ready just in case like I gotta you know protect myself I was constantly like fight or flight which we'll get into in a moment so can you see that the way your brain processes information is actually uh, controlling everything in your reaction your outcome so the first tip for how to maintain your mental health is to understand how you're filtering so are you generalizing by the way, when you have language, like everyone is like this. No one wants to take my call. Uh, I don't wanna bother people. Um, there's so many different examples. This, by the way, if I said, you know, what's your dream vacation? Do you think any two people have the exact same internal representation? And not to get real deep, but do you know that your internal representation and the way you filter has a lot to do with where you were raised and what the beliefs were of the people around you. Do you I'm not gonna get into it right now, but do you see how that ties into what's happening in the world right now where everyone just seems to be disagreeing and fighting and hate and anger? Well, we all have different internal representations. So 
we're trying to convince someone that our way of thinking is the right way of thinking when they have a completely different filter. Doesn't make them right. But like, can you see how you're not even speaking the same language with most people? Because you filter things differently. Yep, absolutely, definitely. It's fun, right? This was the moment where I was like, oh, is being paranoid not normal? Like, that's so weird. Do most people not do that? That's bizarre, like, okay. So to me, it kind of gave me a moment to step back and say, if I'm distorting this information, like what else am I distorting? What else am I generalizing? What else am I deleting? By the way, people delete too. Like, you don't remember that happened? You don't remember when we were at this thing and that happened? And people are like, no. Yeah, because they deleted it. <laughs> yep, WebM yeah. Go down the WebMD rabbit hole. That's fun. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk really fast about when you're in a stress state and what this actually does to your body. So if you are not aware of fight or flight, this is a survival mechanism. That is how humans were actually programmed in the beginning because we had animals trying to eat us or kill us. And so we had to have survival instincts kick in to help us outrun the bear or lion or whatever it may be. And it sounds ridiculous, but this never went away. The problem is we started having fight or flight experiences when we're not really in danger. So another good example of this is, has anyone like went door knocking or picked up a phone? This is mostly real estate, so I'm gonna just go there. Uh, door knock or pick up the phone and you start having like um, anxiety, panic, fear. Oh my God, what if they hang up on me? And your adrenaline, maybe you're sweaty, you start freaking out. That's fight or flight, but like your life isn't in danger. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, check the chat. Yep. <laughs> so, here's what happens a stressor, door knocking. Mm -hmm. We've all been there. I stared at a phone for four hours before my broker was like, just pick up the phone. And there's a book out there that's called The Phone Won't Eat You. It's a good book. Uh, or The Phone Can't Eat You, something like that. Um, like our lives aren't in danger. What's the worst that could happen? They hang up, but we're in like a full fight or flight experience. So a stressor happens like this bear coming at you, right? And that actually kicks in survival fight or flight. After you've proven that you are not really in danger, your body is going to calm down. The problem is over time, humans, especially with media and everything going on and stress and anxiety and all of it, we actually have made fight or flight survival mode like all the time. We're living in it all the time, which is not healthy or good for your body at all. So I want you guys to start paying attention. If you're on edge all the time, if you're, you know, if you're anxious, if you are constantly in that fear mode, like that is not what fight or flight was meant for. And we're associating life or death situations with stuff that is not life or death or life threatening, like picking up the phone or door knocking, right? So I wanna show you when you're in a stress state, look at what's happening and what it's doing to your body. And you can Google this. There's so many doctor you know, articles, you name it. When you're in a stress state, it's survival mode. There's tension, fear. It actually weakens your immune system. It endangers you more. So your exhaustion, headaches, digestive issues, heart disease, anxiety, depression. This is what you're doing to yourself if you are constantly in a stress state, which can we all say that we're in a very stressful business? And when you're an entrepreneur, or maybe a, your own business owner or a parent, or whatever it may be, can you see that stress states are actually like human nature right now? It's considered normal. This isn't normal, okay? So look at what happens when you're actually in a relaxed state. That's what we call rest and digest, energy funnels to your immune system, you're level-headed, calm, empowered, you can control your reactions, centered, balanced, inner peace, strong, and you're, you have awareness. So just reading this, what side would you rather be on? <laughs> Stressed or relaxed? 
And for most of us who are used to being in stress states all the time, it's like, yeah, relax sounds great. How the hell do I get over there? Or how can I even do that? Don't you understand everything I'm going on and I have so much and the world's falling apart and I have kids and I have this and business. Uh, like you, you feel it. It's a different energy. So how do we get you over to the relaxed side? I'm going to give you some tips, but any, any questions on this or anyone noticing that they might be in a stress state more often than they realize? Cause that was me survival mode 24 seven. Do you know how exhausting that is by the way? Constantly being in fear. <laughs> yep. Living it. Yeah. It's not, it's not good. It's not healthy. It's not where we make our best decisions. And they say successful people, whatever successful means to you, but successful people get themselves into a calm state, calm, centered, balanced before making decisions, before doing anything, before reacting. So I want you to start thinking like, what would I have to do? Yes. Thank you for saying that. Tam said, eventually it will manifest in some type of sickness. You guys want to get real deep on stuff. I am happy to after the fact, but you are absolutely correct. When you live on the left side column, you're actually manifesting disease, illness, symptoms in your body. It's not, that's not where you want to be. <laughs> okay. So here's some tips, how to remain calm, centered, balanced. Some may seem obvious, some may not. The first one is you have to release negative emotions. We'll talk more about this uh, maybe in another class, but how much are we holding on to anger, fear, sadness, worry, guilt, shame, anxiety, all the negative emotions? That's actually part of our brain filter system. So to remain calm, centered, and balanced, we can't be holding on to those negative emotions. We can't hold on to anger. We can't hold on to fear and all these things that are not good for us. Our body doesn't want to hold on to that. Respect other people's model of the world. I'm not saying accept, but can we respect that people think differently than we do? Can we respect that people filter information completely different than the way I filter information? Can we respect that people were raised in different places, different cultures, and have different belief systems than I do, than you do, we all do. So can we at least respect that people have a different view of the world? It doesn't make it right, doesn't make it okay if it's negative, but can I at least understand and have some empathy that people are different? And that way, if they don't agree with me, it's not about me trying to force my views on them. By the way, when you come from a calm, centered, balanced place of trying to communicate with someone who thinks differently than you, do you think you could be more effective than if you're coming at like hate with hate or anger with anger or fire and fire, right? So I want, this goes so much deeper, but for the sake of time, I just wanna throw it out there that when you respect that other people are different, you can usually find a way to communicate on the same level. Enforce boundaries. So how do you stay calm, centered, balanced? You figure out what boundaries are important to you. Maybe you're working with people who are not respectful. By the way, just because you respect other people's model of the world doesn't mean you allow them to treat you like crap. Like, let's put that out there. Dr. Matt even said that. Just because you respect and understand where people are coming from does not give them the right to, he said, you know, like crap all over your path, right? Or put you down or be rude or disrespectful. That does not, that is not what that means. So you got to enforce boundaries. Breathe. That seems so simple, yet we all seem to forget it. Uh, I do. I like, like even right now, it's like, oh, I've been talking all this time and I've not taken a deep breath since I said it in the beginning. <laughs> self-care and wellness. Like it's a big trend thing right now. Self-care, mindfulness, meditation. Again, stop putting like limitations or what it's supposed to be. Just what do you need to do to take care of yourself? It could be taking a day off. It could be taking an afternoon off. We go, go, go 24-7. Do you know how many people I've talked to that in quarantine 
were the happiest, healthiest they've ever been. And the second things started opening up again and they started going back to their old ways of go, go, go 24 seven, they're stressed, they're, they're already, you know, sick. So we have to pay attention to what that really is and what that looks like. Life is happening for you, not to you. This is really about taking responsibility and ownership that what we can control is our reaction. What we can control is how we look at things. We can't control what's happening in the world. We can't control what's happening to us. But what if everything, you look at it as a lesson? What if you look at everything as an opportunity? Maybe it's repeat things keep coming up, patterns keep coming up because there's something to be learned there or there's something that maybe you're you're missing or you're not seeing but I can tell you don't they say like your biggest adversity like it leads to who you are challenges struggles in life it makes you who you are as a person and I can honestly say that everything I've experienced in my life has brought me to where I am right now today and not all of it's not all of it's pretty and not all of it's fun and a lot of it sucked, right? It's not that like, oh, bad things are happening and I'm just cool with it and I'm gonna just accept it. No, but what if I say like, these things are happening to maybe teach me something or maybe it does become part of your purpose and who you are and what you're about. So just, again, it's perspective shift, right? It's happening for you, not to you. So I'm gonna give you some quick tips. We're running out of time and I'm gonna end this quickly. So take back control. How do you take back control? Ask yourself, what is causing you to feel this way? Is it fear? Is it fear of not knowing what to say? Is it fear of success? Like, what is it? What outcome am I avoiding? By the way, success can sometimes be the outcome we're avoiding because we don't have leverage in place to handle it. What do I really want? This question right here, if you take away anything from this call, please write down, what do I really want? Because as humans, we are programmed to focus on what we don't want. Rarely does anybody ask us what we actually do want. We actually speak in negatives. I don't want this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to work weekends. I don't, I don't, I don't. I, you know, don't want this. Fascinating thought, your unconscious does not process negatives. Meaning, when I say I don't want to work weekends, my unconscious mind hears I want to work weekends. So I'm going to all of a sudden attract all this business into my life who wants to go out on weekends. I know that gets a little, little deep, but <laughs> that makes sense. So what are you focusing on? What you don't want and you're attracting more of it? Or what you actually want so you can go get it? What is the first step to make it happen? So even if it's small, what is the first step to go after what you really want? Does your reality support you in being the best version of you or not? Meaning, does your environment, do your goals, does your reality, what you've created, support you in being the best version of yourself or not? Dr. Mac gets real deep, real fast. <laughs> so if you ever want more of this, uh, let me know and I'll tell you where you can get more of it. Okay, so I know I threw a lot at you in a very short period of time. So I just wanna do a quick check-in and reflection because again, uh, I know it's a lot. I know, especially if you're not used to hearing things or like, what do you mean I'm out of alignment? How do I get in alignment? What does this all mean? Like we're, we want it all right now. So here are some questions you can ask yourself and reflect on. What is causing you to feel burnout? That's where we all started, right? You all came here today because something appealed to you about avoiding burnout and mental health. So what is causing you to feel burnout? Is it possible you're out of alignment with your values? You may not know what those are, but is it possible that it could be an alignment issue? I believe when you're in alignment, you make things happen and you make it happen fast. If I don't even believe, I know it sounds nuts, I don't even believe in procrastination. To me, it's a lack of clarity. 
when you're procrastinating or you don't really want to do something, it's lack of clarity or it's doing something that doesn't really align with you and what you want to do in the first place. Again, not what we're used to hearing. <laughs> we're used to hearing do more, double down, work harder, push through, get over it. That's not, if it, like I said, that, that doesn't even make sense because it's happening unconsciously and we're not even aware of it. Are you deleting, distorting, or generalizing information in a way that is supporting you or disempowering you? Another one I heard about that is, are you asking yourself empowering or disempowering questions? Why is this happening is a very disempowering question. What could be coming up for me to learn from right now is a little bit more empowering, right? So are you processing information that's actually disempowering you? Which I know we don't have time to get into like limiting beliefs and negative self-talk, but if you don't believe you're worthy or you don't believe you're good enough, are you gonna delete, distort, and generalize information to prove that you're not good enough? That's how deep it gets. That's why I'm obsessed with it and I love it and I wanna share it as much as possible because we are creating our inner thoughts and we're seeing the world the way we see ourselves and it proves it. So for me, having a paranoid filter, guess what? When I hear about bad things happening, I'm like, see, I told you. I knew I was right. I told you this could happen. Even in movies, I'm like, I knew it. I, I, this proves, this is why I don't go there. I would never go there because that's going to happen. It's like, no, it's fake. It's a movie. I'm like, no, it just happened. It proved it to me that that's a real threat. People are like, okay. <laughs> so do you see how the way we process is actually affecting everything? And you need to focus on what you truly want. And if you don't know what that is, maybe that's your takeaway from today is what is it that I do want? What gives me energy? What brings me joy? For everyone who said fine dining, you, I don't have to twist your arm to go to a nice restaurant. For everyone who said I'd rather save money and not do that, I don't have to twist your arm to like go to a cheaper place. So start paying attention to what do you naturally do? What do you naturally spend your money on? Uh, here's another quick one. In real estate, do we get sold leads all the time in different ways? Internet leads, uh, different marketing things that can give us more business. So people would always try and sell me on it. And I'm like, I, I can't, I would never spend money on that. I'm not spending money on leads. I'm not doing that. That's expensive. I can't afford a thousand dollars. Are you out of your mind? I'm not spending a thousand dollars a month on that. That's so much money. But then when it came to personal development and growth or a seminar or a coach, and they're like, it's a thousand a month. I'm like, oh yeah, no problem, of course. It's the same amount of money. And I just told you I can't afford it and I want nothing to do with it. And like, yeah, sign me up. How fast? Let's go. You tell me about an event that's happening and I'm like, oh, I'm in. How much is it? Oh, 5,000. All right, whatever. I'll be there because it's, it's what I want to learn. It's what, so guess what? Learning and growth and personal development is one of my values. Shocking. So pay attention to what you spend your money on. So any questions really fast? I know we are over a few minutes uh, and we're just gonna wrap up. I'm gonna give you some options uh, coming up that I'm actually very excited about. If you wanna dig deeper in this, this like sparks something in you and you're like, all right, what is this person talking about with values? What is she saying? Alignment, like, please tell me more. Uh, go back, I'm gonna send the recording out later. There are tips in here that will help you. It's not that you have to sign up for something to get answers, but if you wanna dig deeper on this, I have started putting together some packages uh, to help you. So I'm gonna go through those real fast and then I'm gonna open it up for questions. Yes, thank you. Okay, so first things first, I am offering what I like to call a realign session. Usually it's $7.95, class special if you book in September, it's $495 for a 90 minute session. This is getting to figure out your values. There's actually a process we do to figure out your values at the unconscious level, we call it a values elicitation, and really get clear on who you wanna become, what you wanna do, what you wanna have. So I'm just throwing it out there. If anyone's like, I really would love, and this is values in different areas of your life. You have values for every area of your life. 
So you pick which area you want to focus on and we help you figure this out. I'm going to give you some testimonials after because this alone can absolutely change your life. <laughs> the next one is what I call the alignment session. It's three hours, give or take. This is actually where we're going to align your desired and actual behavior because we're going to do release work. This is what people don't realize. If you don't release things, anger, fear, sadness, anxiety, shame, guilt, if you don't release things on an unconscious level, you're going to keep repeating what you're doing forever. So we actually do release work. It's called mental emotional release. And we're removing limiting beliefs, negative emotions, that conflict we were talking about. How do we actually align and integrate that conflict? And class special again, 995. And then lastly is a full on breakthrough session. This is in NLP. Uh, thank you to everyone who has to go. I appreciate you staying on after as long as you have. So the breakthrough session, this is what changed my life. So if you noticed a difference in me, this is why. I had a breakthrough session with my NLP coach in November. I went from completely anxious, paranoid, freaked out, wouldn't go anywhere, um, you name it, just completely limiting beliefs, can't do it, not enough, not worthy, whatever, which by the way, most of us are dealing with some type of worthy factor uh, or lack of it. And I did a full on breakthrough session where we figured out the patterns in my life and where that all came from, what the root cause was, and then did all the release work and values and everything that's included in the other two. Uh, it's seven to 10 hours, could be more, and it's based on where you want to have a breakthrough in your life. You know you've set a goal and you're missing it. It's not happening. Something is holding you back, but it's, it's an area of your life. It could even be relationships. Maybe you just haven't had the best relationship luck or haven't found what you're looking for. You can actually do a breakthrough around relationships and get clarity. Uh, and Rachel, she had to go, but she just wanted to say the breakthrough session we did last week, highly suggest it like it's life changing, like immediately. This isn't like six months, we're going to work on it and hopefully it'll make it better. So I want to throw that out there. If you have questions, you can go to my website and show you that next. Uh, to stay in touch, keep me posted. If you have questions, please reach out. Um, Realigncoaching.com. All of this is on there. If you want to learn more, reach out to me. Uh, Instagram, I do have a YouTube as well. I appreciate it. And I want to open it up to um, questions, takeaways, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So I know looking at slides for, I feel like we're on Zoom all day looking at slides, it, like hurts my eyes. <laughs> Someone said their head is exploding. I appreciate it. It's in the best way possible. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, what questions do you have? It was a lot of information. I know we're over slightly, but I just want you guys to know that you have to change things at the unconscious level in order to actually change. So it's great to say that you want to make a change, but if you aren't dealing, and that's my gift, it's figuring out the pattern and figuring out what is actually causing these things in the first place. So does anyone have any questions, takeaways? I'd love to hear what is going through your head. I know we're a little over um, and please reach out and keep me posted too, because I still have people reaching out from class in March, April, May, June, who are having ahas and takeaways and things come up in their life they didn't realize. Yep, getting clarity on what I want, what I don't want, makes it easier to figure out how I can do it. I love that. You gotta start somewhere, right? <laughs> So reevaluating your entire life. Yes, one step at a time. Don't self implode it. This doesn't mean if you realize like you're not where you want to be or you're in the wrong environment. It does not mean you have to like self implode it all and cancel everything. You can also try and figure out what would I have to do to make it work for me? What would I have to do to make it in alignment with what I want? is like real estate. I kept saying, I hate real estate. I hate real estate. Well, that's not very positive. That's focusing on what I don't want. Is there a way I could actually enjoy real estate? Yeah, there is. Here's all the ways that I would actually enjoy it. Okay. So what do I need to do to create that? Does that make sense?
So I appreciate you all so much. I'm gonna stop the recording. I will stay on for a moment in case anyone wants to ask questions after recording, but just thank you. I appreciate you and it means the world to me that you tuned in and I hope you got something out of today that can help you. So thank you.